Hello, this is Hui. Welcome to watch my video, C++ Programming on Linux. In previous video, we had discussed how to install RabbitMQ for C++ on Linux environment. In this short video, we are going to discuss how to write a C++ program using RabbitMQ Exchange and how it works. The example of this video, we are going to demonstrate how using RabbitMQ Direct Exchange to publish and consuming the messages. RabbitMQ uses Exchange and the queue to publish and consuming the messages. First, the producer will publish a message to the exchange. After exchange receives the message, it will be responsible for routing the message to the each queues. Binding must be set up between the exchange and the queues. And the rabbit MQ for exchange, there's a few types. First is a direct exchange, and the second type is a found out exchange, and the topic exchange and the header exchanges. In this short video, we are going to write an example using direct exchange to publish and consuming the messages. Here on my Linux environment, in previous video, we have installed a RabbitMQ and uh, we create a virtual host, which is called a myvhost. We created a user called a test password is a test, and we set up this user test, which is connect with my vhost for all type of message, and all type of reading, and all type of writings. And currently, under my RabbitMQ, there's no queue created under my vhost. So here we create a program called directpublish.cpp and readqueue.cpp. So direct publish.cpp will be using the direct exchange to publish the messages. A direct exchange delivers message to queues based on message routing key. A queue binding to the exchange with a routing key. And the message coming received with the key of R at the direct exchange, the exchange we're routing it to the queue, which is the queue's key equal the R. So here, program's usage, we just using this direct publish. The first argument is the host and the power number, and the second argument is the exchange name, and the next is the routing key, and the, the last is the queue. The queue is optional. If the queue's name provide, we're going to spending the queue with this exchange and with this routing key. If the queue name is not provided, we just publish the message to this exchange and with the key of this direct exchange. Our program first, we have to build up a connection string. The Python will be the username, password, at host name, and the part number. And after that is forward slash the vhost. And then we get the exchange name from command line and the routing key get from command line. The queue name is optional. If the queue name provided, which is argue count equal five, and then we get the queue name from the command lines argument four. First, when we do in the program, we have to instantialize our rapid MQ object AMQP this is connection string. After we got the AMQP object, we can use the create exchange method with the exchange name provided from command line, instantialize this object, which name is EX. Now we have to declare our exchange. We can use the EX declare method. So in this case, we can declare the exchange with name provided for command line and the type is director, and the parameter is a short parameter is defined in the header file, can be auto-delete, durable, passive, mandatory, immediately, if unused, exclusive, no weight, no acknowledge, no local, and multiple. In this short video, 
we don't go in deep of how to use these parameters. We just pick two of them, auto delete and durable. And we use the setup parameter to set up our exchange with our parameter. We can also put this into declare with third parameters. So if the argument C equal five, it means the Q name provide. So first we get a Q name from argument four, and then we use our create Q method with Q name get from command line, instantialize Q object, we name it Q2, then we declare Q. After that, we have to binding this Q with the exchange name with this routine. The binding must be set up between the queue and the exchange. And for the direct exchange, the binding with the name and with routines. After that exchange, we have to set up the delivery model. Its delivery model has two, it's persistent or no persistent. And optionally, we can set up the header with some attribute of message. Typically, so for the message attribute and the payload, we can set up content type, content encoding, routine key, de delivery model. This is mandatory. And this is routine key is mandatory for the direct exchange and the message priority, message publish timestamp, and the publisher application ID. This is a typical way set up for the message attribute. Here we just set up a content type, content encoding. So after we set up, build bonding with the queue, we can make a simple loop. Each loop, we get a message body to the message body string from the console, which is stdcin using the std get line. If the message body, which input not is the end, we use the exchange publish message body with the routine key. If we get the end, we exit from the loop, we end of a program. After we publish, we can use the read queue program to read a message. The usage will be read queue, host and the port number, and the queue name. And optionally, we can say include a header or not header. So for the program first, we have to build a connection string which is the test colon test at host name part number for the slash my host and the queue name we get from a command line. We set up our include header variable which is false. If the argument equal four, which means the include header option selected, then we set up include header with true. For the reading, and first, we have to instantialize RabbitMQ object with connection string connected to our RabbitMQ broker. And we can use the create queue to instantialize the queue object. We name it Q2 and we declare queue object. So because we are going to just reading the message from queue, we don't need a binding with the queue of exchange. This is the consumer part. So after that, we centralize counting with i equals zero. We make a loop while, and we set up this with no acknowledge, depend on application. You can set up a queue with acknowledge and no acknowledge. This demo, we just set no acknowledge. And we create a message object using the queue to get message method. So this is the pointer of message object. So if our message get message count equal minus one, it means our queue is empty, no message in our queue. If greater than minus one, it means there is a message in our queue. Can be one, can be two. So we set up a variable is j equal zero. It's a assigned integer thirty two type, and we just using the m get message, which is this integer j to get the j's message. So after this message being read from the queue, this message will be removed. And this is i is counting how many messages we have in the queue. If our include header is true, we can use the get routine key method to get the message key. We can use the message get exchange method to get the exchange name. 
and we can use message get header method to get the header attribute, for example, content type, content encoding, finish read all the message, we just exit from the program. Now let's save the program. Let's compiling our program. So now our program compiled successfully. So now we have a two executable, direct publish and read queue, which is the consumer read program. Currently, there's no queue under my vhost. So first we try to use a publish, create the queue exchange binding. Program this using is the direct publish, host in the part, exchange, routing key, and the queue. So currently our host is 192.168.0.103. Direct publish, and we call the exchange name. Direct exchange, that's our exchange name, and the key. So we just use the C dot Ontario and the Q. Which, so we just identify our Q is a direct exchange Ontario and Q. So this is a, we can create another Q. The key we use the US, New York. We can call the director, NY. So now we have created two direct queue is direct ON queue and direct NY queue bonding with this direct exchange. The bonding key is Ontario and New York. Now let's check our server. You can see we have created two queue, direct ON queue and the direct New York queue. There's no message in these queues. So now we publish our message with this queue name, with this routing key. So we just write the message, test message using this program with this kind of a parameter and when we publish this message based on the direct exchange definition this message will be routing into this queue so let's let's go back check our queue you can see the message has been routing into the direct Ontario queue this is one message now let's publish another message with the key of US New York. So now our message is a test message, direct publish to this host port number using this exchange, using this routing key. Based on the direct exchange definition, this message will be routing into this queue check again our queue so you can see the second message has been routing into the, this queue now let's try to read the message the read message usage will be this read message house name part number and queue name so this message is the test message direct publish to this house this exchange and this key if we read from other queue this is a test message of direct publish to this host, this exchange, and this routing key. Hello, this is Hui. Thanks to watch my video, which this is useful. It's going to be great to have your feedback.